Hello and welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg Hofdahl. And today we're talking about all things horror at Horror on Main in 2023. <laughs> Yay. So if you are uh, constant listeners, as the Losers Club always says, because, you know, <laughs> they're Stephen King. If you are um, faithful rewinders, you will know that we have not had a podcast um, in, a, in a little over a month. And it's for a good reason. We just finished up. Our seventh book together? Oh my god, yeah. Our and seventh book. And we're still talking to each other <laughs> after did. seven books that and we wrote together. We are now currently, we got our edits back already from our publisher on that one, and we are editing our sixth book, which is coming out in the fall. So we've been busy and and traveling. Our our next book is a travel book. So Yeah, that put a lot of, um, a lot of work on us, but we're not complaining because we've had so much fun traveling all over the United States to spooky cemeteries, restaurants, haunted hotels, um, you name it, we've been there. And so it's been quite a really fun last some, couple months. Some abandoned <laughs> properties. Yes. Um, I even, ha- you'll pick up the book, I won't give it all away, but <laughs> I had a ghost encounter. I've never had a ghost encounter before in my life. So yeah, I mean, we're huge horror fans but so it's funny that we've like never met a ghost so to speak but we actually did or she I should say Kelly did I slept through it <laughs> I told her next time you see a ghost like wake me up girl um so yeah that's going to be all in our upcoming travel book the name right now is kind of in undetermined we've been calling it goth girls guide to travel and um like you said it's coming out from source books in 2024 um we're really super excited about that but once we have an official name, we will shout it from the rooftops. Yes. That's for sure. So now if you're not familiar with us, I'm Kelly Florence. Yes, and I'm Meg Hofdahl. And together we're the co-authors of the Science of Horror book series. And Meg is a fiction horror author. Do you want to talk a little bit about your books? Sure. So um, I have a novel that's going to be going out um, soon to publishers through my agent, which I'm really excited about. And that is about a female serial killer. Um, but I have a, a book... Um, well, what do you call it? Trilogy. Trilogy. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I swear I do write for a living. I actually do put <laughs> words together. Uh, yeah, so I have a, a trilogy that is a um, – it has supernatural elements, but it also has, like, you know, just axe murder elements because I like those too. Um, and it – it centers around this little town in Minnesota called Willoughby, this fictional town. And we absolutely love, like, anything horror. So for me, it was a dream to write this trilogy. And then I also have um, three books of short stories because I am a huge fan of the short story form. So um, I'm sure the Rewinders have heard this many times before, but it's nice to sort of remind you all that, um, yeah, I do I do write other things. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And so we have had the Horror Rewind podcast now since 2017. Has it been that long? Yeah. Oh, so wow. which is crazy. Um, when we first started, we were rewatching horror movies from our childhood and seeing if they lived up through the lens of today. And now we're talking about new horror because we've rewatched a lot of old horror and there's so much new horror. We need to talk about it. Speaking of, if you know anything about us, you know we love the Evil Ger- <laughs> Dead movies and this newest iteration, Evil Dead Rise. We were so ready, and Meg has a gore whore hat, and she wore oh, it. Oh, I should have worn it oh. for this. But, oh, but because we also are doing this on TikTok right now, so people can actually see us, and we're talking. So that's why, you know, for once, I could have finally yeah, had a prop. Oh, well. <laughs> I, I'm such a prop comedian. I'm <laughs> sad I don't have it. But, yes, opening night, I was able to see it opening night. I think you saw it opening weekend as well, right? Mm, yeah, pretty pretty soon after it came out, yeah. And we freaking loved oh Evil Dead God. Rise. So the gore, obviously, I was, I, that's what I was um, getting to with the gore <laughs> horror hat. So great. I love the story. I love that the original um, people are still involved as producers. I thought this movie was such a fun Um, setting because we've never seen Evil Dead outside of, you know, the cabin setting and, of course, back in time. But this was so new, this high rise. And what a nightmare. Like an earthquake? Well, yeah, I mean, an earthquake alone is just scary. But I love that for the first time, yeah, we get to see this sort of urban Evil Dead, right? It's coming out of the forest and into the city, which is really, really cool. And um, above that, like, I just love that it was a story about motherhood, like, at the very heart of it. What a, you know, 
I loved 2013, Evil Dead. Oh, yeah, me too. Um, but I thought that there was such a great female lead in this. And, like, you, you – from the very beginning when she is, like, having her sort of, like, am I pregnant moment throughout – amazing growth like this is the kind of story arc you want in a novel or a movie and this is an evil dead movie it would be really easy to just like you know like just be like oh how let's have a bunch of dumb teenagers stuck in a high rise but no which is fun too which is fun too i don't mind that um especially when one of them is bruce campbell but um i don't know i just it was such a well-constructed story and I'm always on this podcast and just talking in general like how horror to me is about creating characters that you care about so that you care if they get you know killed and every death in this movie I was like ah, oh no yeah yeah <laughs> I know I love it too and I also love the cleverness that they played with the tropes of the evil dead universe like This floating horror, which we know, you know, going back and hearing how they filmed the first Evil Dead and even Evil Dead 2, they put that camera on the board and they just ran (laughs) with it. And the beginning, you think it's that same Mm -hmm. trope, but it's a drone. And it's just clever. And, oh, my gosh, the gore. Like, the the cheese grater, of course, was the hashtag emoji that was going along with this. That scene, your husband couldn't get through it, right? Like, even the preview? Oh, no, he saw, yeah, he saw the trailer, and he's like, I'm not going to that with you. I'm so sorry. So the first time I went and saw it by myself, and then my friend Caitlin wanted to go, and so I got to see it twice, which was really cool. And it was fun to see it with somebody else. And that was, like, my first time watching, like, a really, like, horror movie with her. And she didn't flinch, and I was like, okay, I like this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, she's she's doing well. She's She can handle it. So, um, yeah, that was It was such a movie-going experience. It was so fun. And, oh, my gosh, the two teenagers. I love them. Yes. And and I'm saying it like that wistfully because they do get get killed. And, um, I mean, spoiler spoiler alert. alert. (laughs) Um, And, oh, and the little girl. And, and like I said, just this idea that it's about motherhood and sisterhood and families. And they're a real family living in a real place. Um, that was huge to me. Like, they actually seemed like a real family, like sincere, earnest. And that, when you couple it with the amazing gore, oh, my gosh, I can't ask for anything more. No, like, there's a wood chipper. Like, come on. I mean, and then the, like, amalgamation monster at the end. Oh, it's so good. It's obviously, it. we've spoiled it all, but guess what? If you haven't seen it, go well, see it. Well, yeah. I You're going to love it. Go see it. Please, please, please. Now, something that came out, I guess it was earlier in, I think it was before this. Mm-hmm. See, my timeline is all messed up now. It's 2023. <laughs> where, yeah. What month is it? Yeah. But um, Scream 6 came out, and it's now out. And I should mention this, too. I think Evil Dead Rise is still in the theater, but you can get it, like, on Vudu or buy it. Um, Scream 6 is on Paramount. Or, no, sorry, Peacock. I watched it, th- I think, three times in the past month because oh, wow. people keep coming over and I'm like, have you seen this yet? And they're like, no. So I rewatch it with them. And Wait, are you talking about Scream? Yeah, oh, Scream. Okay, because last time I talked to you, you hadn't seen it at all. Yeah, I know. So and now I want to hear it three what times. you think. I thought it was so much fun. Again, I like this city. I like the New York City setting. That yeah. was really fun to see um, this group. Like and, and it made perfect sense they wrote it, I think, well, that, of course, they're going to have trauma bonded, and they're going to stick, stick together and go to college together. And, yeah. of course, the sister is going to follow because, you know, she needs to be t- close by. And it's one of those – I mean, I think every screen movie, it's just that whodunit mixed with some nice jump scares – you know, after after like writing this this Agatha Christie book, I feel like it has that who done it yeah. Agatha Christie element yeah. to it, doesn't it? Yeah. Cuz you're like, okay, I know it's somebody that we've already met, yep. right? Because that's always been the element. And I yeah, I thought it was really fun. And I and the uh, that element of guessing who it is, like um that just, I don't know, it never gets old for me. And I was just like, I, I kept guessing, guessing. And then, you know, I thought maybe it was that person. And then when it when it ended up being that person, I was very excited. Now, we won't <laughs> reveal the killer um, because we don't want to spoil it if you hadn't seen it. But I was just, you know, so worried the whole time for all of these beloved people that we were meeting. And then it's just, it's complicated and wonderful. And I, I won't give anything away because well, I feel like, no. I mean, I think Evil Dead, you can say somebody died and it's not a surprise, <laughs> but I don't want to say who the killer is. No, we is. won't say who the killer is. But I also want to talk about Jenny Ortega because um, I want to be her 
because she's Wednesday. She's in this movie. She was in um, not um, – oh, uh, X. Yeah. Wait, is it one X, two Xs, or three Xs? Just X. It's X because, you know, there was that other horror movie that was three yeah. Xs. Okay. And she gets to be Lydia's daughter now in I know, Beetlejuice 2. Which I don't think is real. Which everyone's think- telling me is real. I know oh. it's real, but like it sounds like like something from another timeline, well, another universe. That's true. When until I see Beetlejuice two like on my eyeballs, yeah, I it's, won't a, it's too good it. to be true. Like yeah. it sounds too good to be true. Yeah. No, okay. she's amazing. I love. I can't think of um, her sister's name. Oh, but I remember I told you to watch. Oh yeah, that movie. she's in Bed Rest. Yes, is that, that what was it's that was really enjoyable. The the main actress in yes. Scream. Yeah. Okay, okay. So and that was on some sort of streamer I think Tubi or something, or something. Tubi. Yeah. okay okay bed rest but so much fun so out. those are a couple others another movie we saw in the theater and I've also shown people when they come over <laughs> is Megan how much fun was that it was so much fun and I feel like I feel like from a horror standpoint it, w- it it's more on like the fringe of like this is fun fun yeah you know what I mean like it it doesn't have it doesn't bring the horror as much as Evil Dead Rise and Scream 6 but it brings the fun for sure yeah I mean and I love Jennifer Carpenter she's cool that's her right no it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a mom. Oh, I got I'm the like, actress what? wrong. No, Allison, it's Williams? Allison Williams. It's not Jennifer Carpenter. <laughs> I'm sorry. They kind of look alike. Oh. Don't you think? Sure. They're both. Okay. I love Brian Jordan Alvarez. <laughs> and if you are on TikTok and you follow him, he's the best. I love his characters. And he was in it. And then. Oh, wait. <laughs> You could say that three-person name, and I couldn't even say. I called Allison Williams Jennifer Carpenter. I'm so sorry, everyone. I have that mom disease. Uh, well, I love the movie. I thought it was a lot of fun, like you said. Um, yeah, I give me Chucky. We love the TV series. We love the movies. Give me Annabelle. The, Megan was like the perfect in-between of like creepy and sweet and – like terrifying because she can control stuff like the new yeah, Chucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she can. Yes, yes. Like the um the re- Mark reboot. Hamill Chucky. Yeah, yeah. Can like you know be like Alexa or something. But um yeah no I I really liked um the element of suspense when she's like when they were like trying to fix her and you don't know if she's gonna like grab somebody uh. at any moment and stuff. Like that. I've only seen it once, so I okay. need to watch it again. Maybe that's why I can't tell Allison Williams and Jennifer Carpenter <laughs> apart. Um, I yeah I think it was it's very enjoyable and also it's of course a cautionary tale as a lot of technology horror is of you know she this girl is mourning and her aunt hasn't raised children before yeah that and was it's a like good hand story. them an iPad or hand yeah. them this toy and then Megan's like starting to tell her when to brush her teeth and flush the toilet and all of a sudden it's like where are are we losing our humanity well yeah and I think like any good horror movie it plays on that like our anxieties of like the, our time that we're living in right now and it's like that is something I mean people are literally having AI girlfriends now apparently and and um like this idea of like celebrities who I've heard are like creating AI versions of themselves to talk to people. Yeah. Like, you know, things like that. So, I mean, this isn't that far fetched. Um, And so, yeah, I thought it was a really good sort of with the the grief storyline and the, I thought it had one of the best like climaxes and like um, sort of revenge sort of kill death scenes of her sort of like, you know, killing Megan, I thought was great. The two of them working together and stuff. So loved it. Quick aside, I'm wondering if you have written a technology gone wrong short story or Mm. have you incorporated any of that in your novels? No, I don't really think so. I don't know why. I (laughs) I think I know why. It's because I'm like very, I think I'm nervous to sort of like wade into that because I'm not the most heck savvy person. Like, I mean, I can, you know, text somebody, but like I don't know a lot about that. And so I think that might be one of the things that I'm like, but you know, but if it is science fiction or horror, like it's okay if I don't know because I just make it up. So Because, and I also, we're both huge fans of Black Mirror and that's definitely yeah. all based in technology and the new yeah. season's coming out uh, uh, in a few days or next month anyway. Oh, I'm excited for that. That'll be really good. Uh, yeah, I, I think maybe I'm like intimidated by it, but I, I'm going to give it a try. Okay. That's, this is, you've heard it here, folks. 
She said it first. <laughs> okay, now one of the most fun, again, why do I keep having fun at these horror movies? You know why? Because there's been a lot of great horror movies. One of the most fun horror movies oh. I went to is Renfield. Oh. And I heard um, like uh, my an early review said, oh, they can't find their tone because like they're trying to be too many things. And I was like, I went in like, okay, well, I'll just see. And guess what? It was freaking perfect to me because it was comedy. It was horror. There was romance. And it was like earnestness. Meg. It was so earnest. Okay, Nicholas Holt, and that is his name. Um, also, he can ether me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've gotten to the this part Sorry. now. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, no, okay, so I'm a huge Nick Cage fan. I feel like that's like a taboo thing to say sometimes in this society. Um, but I love him, whether he like eats scenery or not. Like, I love oh, Nick Cage. Oh, I love Cage. him too. And I felt like he put every, ev- just like every role, he put every every part of his heart into being Dracula, which is like manna from heaven as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. Like, please give me more. Like, I will watch this as a television show every day. Um, Nicholas Holt, Aquafina. I just thought their romance was so cute. I love when there's a little romance. Oh, my God. And Ben Schwartz. Like, that was really oh, fun yeah, to see him ben as a bad Schwartz guy. Ben Schwartz is a bad guy from Parks and Rec and um, Search Party. Love him. Sonic. Sonic. He's yes, he's Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, yeah. So no, I I loved I loved Runfield, and I mean yeah, I, I at first I was like maybe I need to have like low expectations, but um, he actually, you know, yeah. No, I was, it was awesome. I the whole movie it. was awesome. Loved every part of it. And so uh, yeah, definitely. Um, also, stay through the credits. There's not like a secret scene or anything, but the credit sequence is masterful and beautiful. And what an art. The people who do uh, uh, credits for, like, movies and people who edit yeah. trailers. Like, the, these we? people are so talented. Oh, yeah. We were watching a short film at the, the Duluth oh, yeah. or the Minnesota Film Festival. Yeah. And it had such a good um, credit scene. And it's funny how, like, you don't really – if it's, like, a, a passable one, you don't really even notice it. But if it's a really good one or a really bad one, you it, it sticks in your mind. You know, yeah. it's something that is actually can really, like, set the tone. So it's pretty cool. Definitely. Now, I – want to segue into some older movies that I watched recently and um, it was recommended the first Grave Encounters was recommended to me I watched it and I'm like we'll see because people were like it's scary even for like diehard horror fans Uh, I think this was on Tubi as well I watched it. I'm not going to give anything away because I don't think you've watched it yet. No, I haven't <laughs> watched it, but I want to ask, like, when it came out, what is it? What is it? Okay, I'm, I'll look it up. Okay, look it but up. But it's, like, a found footage, and it's some YouTubers, like, with a paranormal channel. And they're going in, and, and like, nothing scary has been happening on their channel for a while. So, you know, they're wondering, should they start faking things? <laughs> I mean, you know. Okay, I think I feel like I've heard about this. It's so freaking good and then the second one is so meta i literally screamed and jumped more (laughs) than i have in a really long time watching the first one then i went back and watched it at 2011 and it's canadian okay um i watched it re-watched it with campbell and then we watched the second one and we loved it and then we went back and re-watched both of them with mark and everybody was scared like it was that kind of experience i i'm not guaranteeing that you're going to have the same kind of experience (laughs) but i freaking loved it meg there's so many moments and it's just wrong you know when you're in an abandoned place and then you see something it's like anything crawling oh you know stuff you know (laughs) stuff moves if it moves weirdly there's there's crawling there's like the when people when in horror movies when they do like the cracking sounds oh I, like yes i'm gonna text meg's husband because he keeps texting about twizzlers <laughs> and it's on my phone and, right yeah, now so, as we're tiktoking he's, so i'm gonna you're telling him to, to stop yeah. texting okay um, anyway. So anyway, well, I want to I w- want to talk about books because I'm a nerd and I love horror books. Um, I've actually been reading a few more like classic books lately. I've been reading Sylvia Plath and stuff like that. Um, and I'm also listening to her biography, which is 45 hours long. Um, but I am a huge fan of Clay McLeod Chapman, and he's here. Uh, actually, he's our neighbor um, at this horror con, and. He um, has written some amazing books that I all want you to read, including Ghost Eaters, which is about this fungus, this, like, pill 
um, that you that you take, and it helps you to um, see ghosts basically, and um, it's amazing. I loved it. It's just a really emotional story about grief. It's really good. Um, he wrote a book um, called The Remaking, which is actually about the remaking of a horror film where somebody died um and there's a supernatural element i loved it and there's also um whisper down the lane which is it kind of is about the sort of satanic panic um era and then somebody who like went through that and then grows up and somebody's trying to like get revenge on them for sort of um doing something when they were a kid that they shouldn't have um anyway great author and so i geeked out really hard <laughs> when he when i saw he was next to us also today. speaking of if you are in the if, uh, hunt valley like we're i say baltimore maryland because that's where we flew in but it's hunt valley if you're in the area you can stop by on uh, saturday or uh, sunday we'll also be here sunday mm -hmm. so tomorrow is a big day and i'm saying tomorrow because today is friday when we're doing this uh, but also stop by anytime um tomorrow yeah. or sunday and this yeah. saturday we are doing um not only will you be able to come and we're we've got books and we're signing them and all that business but we also are um doing a panel with um will clay mcleod chapman that i just mentioned um vincent ward who's an actor um he from oh lots of things um but he adapted a comic book and we're going to be talking about that called devil row um into a film that tony todd's in so you know, that's pretty cool. And uh, he was also in The Walking Dead. And also Lucky McKee is on our panel. And he wrote and directed the movie May, which I know a lot of people are fans of that. So, um, and I watched it a million years ago and I loved it, but I like feel bad. Have, did you ever see it? I don't think I did. Um, I have not seen it in a million years. So I need to watch it again because it's it's a great sort of women in horror film. Um and uh oh and we're also doing a reading tomorrow so that'll yes. be really fun we're gonna read a little bit of our first five books just you know a little bit just to get a taste meg's gonna read uh, part of a short story and then we're gonna take some q a time yeah. so it, we fun. are looking forward to talking to people um something that we were able to do uh, we'll get back to other things that we've been watching and reading but i wanted to make sure to mention that we got to play this game through the company if you've heard of it called hunt a killer and maybe you've maybe if you're like us you get ads that pop up for like hey do you want to catch a serial killer <laughs> hey you see it's like <laughs> i'm a little tiny reporter yeah. but um they have a blair witch game that is it's like an escape room except there's boxes that you go through with evidence with letters, there's an app that goes along with it so you can listen to voice messages, you can type in codes. You get actual physical props and things that you use to investigate. And I'm not gonna give any of it away because that would be giving away you know, the, the, the plot, but you have to solve each box to solve what happened to the people missing in this story. And it is within the universe of the Blair Witch. So, it is so cool. And I think my favorite part of it was that um, we did it as families. Because yes. we played and we had our husbands and our kids involved. And that actually made it really fun. Yes. And it also, I feel like it took like that many of us to figure stuff out. Well, like I'd like to be like, oh my gosh, you know, like it was it was so easy. But it wasn't easy. It was very challenging and in I, the best way. And I think too, it it is like a team effort. And I think yeah. if you were doing it with a smaller group, it would just take you longer. Yeah. But we were able to say, okay, you work on this thing and yeah. we'll work on this thing and you look at this map. I'm not, I don't think I'm giving much away when I say those. I, no. It was very vague, <laughs> but it was so much fun. And I think it's a nice bonding experience. One thing we recommend, and this I don't think this is giving away away anything either, is if you have a black light, like Ooh. invest in one. Ooh, because Ooh. you know some clues they do <laughs> give you a black light, but we found that our our surroundings were too bright to so we had to okay. like go to a different room but if you have a black light you could be with the group like out in the oh, open that's all i'm saying and who doesn't it's like the office who doesn't yeah. want to black light their room oh lord um no i had so much fun and i the, okay and this is not like i'm i'm not you know um <laughs> saying that i'm so smart and i'm so great at this and i don't think that this is a spoiler too much but <laughs> i um was really into the like cryptology is that what you call it yeah Crypt 
crypto or co- crypto- code breaking <laughs> code breaking <laughs> i actually really like it i used to have like a little book of it when i was a kid and i think that might have come in handy yeah because i i did a lot of it yeah so that's <laughs> that's just you know a little bit of a taste a little bit of a peek and then we were enjoying it so much we haven't solved it yet because we're waiting to get together with our, the entire families again um but we got through three boxes i think in a weekend and uh you know just because like there's like what how many boxes six. are there okay six okay but then we looked into it and you can even have like a monthly subscription like how fun is that get together yeah. with a group of friends or do it as a family yeah and it's like an escape room in your house and you're just solving mysteries like that is right up our alley it's so cool and i feel like nowadays um i feel like that there's so much competition as far as like being on your phone and like you know watching netflix but this is like something to do together that's still like actually way more fun than those things and um sometimes you have to like set aside that time and be like this is going to be game time but and once you're in it you're just like oh my god this is amazing why am i not doing this all the time the other thing i love is that it's working together to solve something it's not competitive it's not like who can solve it faster it's like no you're you're working together so it's really team building like this might be a really good thing to um, do even like as a team building exercise for like a group project or Ooh, a, like coworkers. That's a professor in you. See, I know. <laughs> that's a communications yes. professor in you for sure. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And um, I mean, we'll have to do, like you said, they have the monthly subscription. Yeah. And I think there's like the Hunt a Killer has like a more contemporary thing. This is their Blair Witch um, version. But I would definitely be into the Hunt a Killer like – because I think – I like to think – I'm one of those people who likes to think, like, they can figure out, like, who a killer You're is. You're one of those internet warriors. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Solving um, crime. Yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, no, I I mean, well, I, we wrote a book on serial killers. Yeah, I feel like did. that in some sort of, like, funny – um, incident where they like need somebody to solve a crime like here at Horror on Main like if somebody gets murdered yeah. right now like they'd be like okay who can we ask who's here to like look at the evidence and we would do it we would be here to do but, that um, so the, those who are on the visual medium Meg is about to hold up a bloody knife but it's actually her purse and it's a Chucky themed purse isn't that yes. great and I bought Chucky chai tea today so this is why I love horror cons because well okay so we were watching i'm i'm digressing we watched today this documentary called mer people it's like a show so we haven't watched all the episodes yeah it's on yet. netflix but you know it's about this like niche um group right this niche group that they they like spend thousands of dollars on their tails because they want to be mermaids and this is our version here. Yes. Horror on Main is our version of like that niche thing that we love. And we've already had so many wonderful conversations with with people about horror, but also the vendor room. Can we just like break down oh my gosh. what's going on in the vendor room? It's the best vendor room I've ever you seen. You name a horror fandom. Yeah. Obscure mainstream, you name it, it there is a product here for you. Like mm-hmm. we are going to come home with like multiple suitcases. <laughs> it's bad. And I see but that it's good. my husband is watching this right now. Oh, you didn't on hear TikTok. that. You didn't hear that. <laughs> and I've already spent money. But I got I got Chuck E. Chai tea and um I mean, how could I not? I love tea, and now just knowing that it has Chucky's name on it just makes me so happy. And, yeah, literally any fandom you can think of. And I was, like, saying to Kelly, like, usually when we're at cons, there are usually, like, lots of fandoms, which is totally cool. Like, I'm, I'm happy for, like, Harry Potter people and sci-fi people and all that, but this is, like, straight horror. All horror everywhere you look. And the money is gonna fly out of my Chucky purse. I'm I'm afraid, and not in a supernatural <laughs> way, but but maybe because oh, that's how fast maybe. Meg's gonna spend it. Oh. <laughs> and now I'm like picturing Chucky like with me oh. shopping. Oh, and oh. you could hold his hand. Oh. I still love when he was. I loved when he was oh, um, yeah. trick or treating. I know he was so cute. And remember when <laughs> um, he was like not evil? Oh my oh. god! I love cute little baby Chucky. Yeah. Oh. oh, okay. And so we are so excited. And I, I guarantee we've talked about this before. <laughs> but literally, the Chucky TV series. That's going to be the Universal. Yes. Ha- hor- Halloween Horror Nights. Yes. This year is going to be the TV show version. Like we have to go, Meg. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. 
I'm going with you. No so worries. We're going. We're definitely going. Sorry. Yeah. You heard it. You heard it here. <laughs> Just like how I'm going to write a tech gone wrong. <laughs> I need to think of, like, what's my angle that people haven't done yet? Like, what is the technology? Um, you know what comes to mind is I, I, I stopped using it, but I have this, like, face thing oh, that yeah. you, like, go vzz, and it's supposed to, like, lift up your face. Like, something like that. We could... We could play on, you know. It's like changing you into a reptile or yeah. something. <laughs> or revealing the reptile underneath. Yes. And I was thinking, because um, we're both wearing our smartwatches oh. right now, that it's like. It like fuses yeah. to you. And it's just like slowly. Becoming... And it's like, and then instead of just telling you to stand up, it makes you stand oh. up. And instead of telling you you're being lazy, it like. <laughs> it slaps you. It makes you slap yourself yeah. in the face. <laughs> Bruce Campbell style. Yes. Oh, okay. I, ta- I talked about it. So I wrote about it um, in the uh, travel book, but we got to go to see the Evil Dead 2 party at Alamo Draft House, and they were doing that as like a competition. Instead of a stre- screaming competition, it was who could do the best Ash um, impression, and it was people hitting themselves. And oh, my it, gosh. It was, it was so great. It was so, so, so great. Yeah, so – you know, I'm a I'm a fan of so many things. We contain multitudes, <laughs> people. I love that slapstick comedy. Like Bruce, Bruce Campbell, of course, does it in Evil Dead too. So well, well, it's very classic. It's like Chaplin. It, it is. Yes, and so it's just like Buster and like um, Donald O'Connor and Singing in the Rain. Like it's amazing. Yeah. No, I know, and like it fuses so well with horror. But you know, I feel like we don't see it very much because even like, well, like when I think of my favorite horror comedies, I think of like Shaun of the Dead. Um, obviously Evil Dead 2, but, like, Bruce Campbell just brings that element that, like, it just, it's that you don't see it in other places. Was there any slapstick in Evil Dead Rise? There was I the think, eyeball. I think the eyeball is yeah. the closest thing to yeah. slapstick. But. Yeah, that was fun. And I love when horror doesn't take itself too seriously. Yes. But I also love it when it really takes itself I seriously, know. too. So. See, we love a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, we do. And that's okay. Yeah. Oh, no, we were talking about um, – I'm going back to now what we've been watching, and we were talking about, you know, we could solve the crime. There have been so many good true crime documentaries mm. lately. Like, okay, first of all, we've never talked about this on the podcast, but the Murda murders, like yeah. both of the um, documentaries that came out around the same time, and then we got to watch the trial, like the end of the trial live. Drama. After, well, after we got informed, like – that's real horror, people. Have you gotten into, like, the Lori Vallow, business? Oh, yeah, Chad that Abel one was business? so freaking scary. That doesn't even seem real. That's so scary. It's so scary with the guys. Um, and then I told you I watched the MH370, yeah. like, right before we went on this trip. And I'm like, why did I do that right <laughs> before I went on a plane? But the idea that this plane is still missing, like... Something's fucked up. And I loved all the conspiracy yes. theories and like what's going on. And so it's it. not giving anything away, but each they have there's three episodes and each episode goes with a different angle of what people think could have happened, but they definitely don't solve anything. But every single episode, my husband and I looked at each other, we're like, Yeah, that that makes total sense. And then I know, the next after one's like, every no. time I'm like, Oh yeah, that's what happened, that's what happened. Maybe I'm just very gullible, but it seemed I mean they were making they were making they, some persuasive they arguments. Were. So that was very good. And then oh my gosh. Well I watch a lot of them. I watch just Dateline. Like I watch my Dateline like when I'm folding my laundry, the one that came out on Sunday, I like watch it on my Monday and Tuesday when I'm like putting the underwear away. And um I I just I'll never get enough of it. I don't know what it is. I just I love a good true crime doc. And I love how Dateline does it because they they come in there that that Keith, what's his Morrison? face? Morrison. And he just, like, has that voice. Oh, did you see the Murdoch one he did? Yeah. Like, come on. I mean. Injected in my veins. I know. I know. I love all that shit. And there's just something about it. Um, that, But that's why we wrote a book about serial killers. Yeah. The science of serial killers, if anyone's interested. Yes, it is. It is fascinating. <laughs> uh, so uh, coming up, we've already mentioned it, but our book that is coming out in this fall, in September to be exact, is called The Science of Agatha Christie. And a lot of people, when they hear that our next book is Agatha Christie, they're like, that's not horror. Like, what? It's a cozy mystery. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, there's murder. <laughs> Is that there's, not horror? There's horrific descriptions. Actually, I'm very, like, uh, as I was, like, rereading and reading some of them for the first time, I was like, actually, this is, like, really brutal. And um, I think that the elements of horror um, are certainly there. And I don't know why people don't really put 
the two together but like maybe that's our calling maybe we need to sort of like bring Agatha Christie to the horror community and bring and we need the, to bring the mystery community yes, to the horror community yes like we need to like that's that's why we were put on this earth Kelly <laughs> yes we're gonna mingle <laughs> yeah because I love all of it I love mm-hmm. both things and and the thing is there's it's really not that different like I have a friend who she's a big cozy mystery reader um she also likes horror, and me too. And I like, and I like to like, yeah, do it all. So. And guess what? Like we were saying with Renfield, we like a little romance yeah. in our horror once in a while. We like yeah. some romance in our mystery, and yeah. it makes it even more tragic than when somebody dies. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the stakes get higher, and we love that. So yeah, no, I think um, I'm I'm excited for the dialogue of like talking to people when we have our Agatha Christie book because um, I think I think. We're going to maybe teach some people some interesting stuff because I know I learned a lot. Yeah. And it's just like our Stephen King book. uh, It's part biography. So what was happening in the world and Agatha Christie's life when um, she wrote this story? And then, of course, delving into the science behind that story, the book, the short story. Um, And we talk about some adaptations as well, film and TV. And, of course, uh, The Mousetrap, which is her most famous and the most long-running play in London. Yeah. And if, you know, you're listening to this or watching this and – You've never read Agatha Christie? Like, I really, really encourage you to. And she's really easy to get into. I think that, you know, there might be this idea of, like, well, she's from the 1930s. Like, how am I going to – how is that going to be accessible to me? Um, But actually, you know, it doesn't – it's very – a very easy book to slide into any of her books. And um, it also means there's problematic stuff in there, and we address that in our book. But um, overall, like she's she's the queen, and um, and like literally the most prolific yeah. mystery writer of all mm-hmm, time, female, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just so, writer. Yeah. So um, her books have sold. I mean, it, at some points more than the Bible, I believe. So um, yeah, no, she's <laughs> she knocked it out of the park, and she lived a nice long life. And her biography is so interesting. Like, not only was she this author, but she was also um, – her husband was an archaeologist, and she, like, learned how to, like, get into that and, and how to properly take out these, like, you know, sacred – Egyptian relics out of the dirt and I think that's pretty cool. And if you've read Agatha Christie or you've watched any of her movies you know there's a lot of poisoning happening Mm. and she also knew her poison. She knew her chemistry. She worked with a pharmacist for a while and so it's just it's fascinating to realize how much truth is brought into fiction so much of the time. Meg speaking of that (laughs) what was the single most research you've had to do when writing about a certain time era or a certain thing? That's a good question. You know, I feel like the one I struggled with the most actually was the 1960s, funnily enough, Um, because I feel like so many people like living today still were there, you know, and I think that like when it comes to something that's older, um, I have like steeped myself in a lot of like literature from then. Um, and the 1960s obviously has the element that I've seen films from then. And I have read literature too. I'm a Shirley Jackson fan and all that. But for some reason that just felt like I wanted to just make sure I did a really good job. And like I just I, – so I actually – asked my dad a lot of questions um, because he was alive then. And so I would ask, like, what kind of cigarettes would somebody smoke if they were just, like, like I remember that this one character is kind of hoity-toity rich. And I'm like, okay, so what kind of cigarettes would he smoke? And, like, what – you know, that kind of thing. And, and just doing my research. But I feel like nowadays, like, it's so easy to do research that there's no excuse. <laughs> also, I feel like a pitfall that some people might get into is – you think about the 60s, you're like, oh, hippies. And then it's just like, that's what the 60s is. Yeah. And you don't actually explore, just like today. I don't know what people are going to say about 2023, <laughs> like what um, you know, stereotype there's going to yeah. be. But not everybody in the 80s wore neon and yeah. leg warmers. Yeah, you know? yeah, so yeah. you can't just yeah, yeah. write it off as a yeah. what you th- like think it is. Yeah, that's very true. And we probably do that with other eras too but like it's so far back that we like can't even like as somebody like myself who is like only marginally like um well studied about those things I probably 
need to have to learn a lot more to get it accurate. But I try. That's also the fascinating thing about like uh, horror movies and stories that are set in way past eras. I think that that is fascinating. Like I, we were just talking to somebody about Robert Robert Eggers and how well he does his research and how well he writes his dialogue. Um, I know you didn't lo- like The Northman as much as I did, but just knowing how much freaking history and yeah. like uh, intricate work went into like creating dialogue to be authentic like holy crap well and not just the writing like um when you're making a film like that the aesthetic like i can just say like it it's the 60s in the book and you you know but with that not and being it that far like long ago in the northman and stuff and having to do the aesthetic that's pretty impressive yes um yeah I, i but i didn't like (laughs) <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> uh, it's you know, and it's not everybody's thing. Yeah. Um. So I want to watch. We're talking about things a little bit adjacent to the horror genre. I want to know what have you read that is not horror? Are you reading anything that's not horror? Or oh me? Yeah. What, is, yeah. what have you read lately that's not well, horror that you okay? Would so recommend? I've gone down this like Sylvia Plath hole. Um. Like I said, I'm listening to her biography, and it's fascinating because she only lived till she was 30, but this biography is 45 hours long, and I'm like, wow. (laughs) So I'm listening to it, and I'm always like, okay, I think I'm at like 35% through or something, and I've had to like – I'm listening to it through Libby, and so I just keep like taking it out because like it's taking a long time. Um, But uh, it's it's really helping though like – like enforce all the things I'm reading so I read um her book of poems called Ariel and um I read the bell jar I had never read the bell jar before and it is well it's amazing her poetry is amazing and knowing about her life and um like how much she loved literature and how much she wanted to be a writer in a time when she was told like women don't write they have babies and they get married and um and how that really tormented her and depressed her and she you know she ended up um killing herself when she was 30 when she had two young kids um and so it's sad but I feel like a lot of people only know that aspect of her and there's just like obviously 45 hours worth of um things to learn about her and and it's just fascinating so I really like that and I'm also reading a book of poetry because I'm I'm trying to to get more into poetry um of Edna St. Vincent Millay and um and I'm trying to think what else I've been reading lately. I'm re- I'm reading The Spite House by Johnny Compton, which um, I don't know if it's a, I, yeah, I think it's his debut novel. Um, and so far, it's a really intriguing premise where it's this dad and his two daughters, and they're on the run, but you don't know why they're on the run. And they are going to move into this house um, that is haunted and document. They're, they're being paid. He's desperate for money, so he's going to go into this house and document what they hear and see in there because it's paranormal. So, I mean, what what better setup can you have? I love it. Um, so I just started that one, and um, that's really good. And I have not been as active on TikTok. I want to start, like, getting back on there and talking about books. It's just been crazy. Life's just, you know, nuts. And also we did a lot of, like, reading and research for a travel book, so – Oh yeah, you know. yeah. We've been we've been busy. We haven't been you know just sitting around. <laughs> um, if we are sitting, we are writing. So, uh, but that it's, it's been a great problem to have. Or watching mer people. Yeah, which there you I go. consider research. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, we all need some downtime, right? Like, can we just no, enjoy? No, we, we don't. We have nothing to prove. I'm working through my this with my therapist. Everyone, we have nothing to prove. You have nothing to prove to yourself or anyone else. Relax, rest. Turn that voice off in your head. And so here's my theory, and maybe I'll write a re, uh, an essay on this. I think that generations past, and still people today, um, some have had some jobs, and like my ancestors and my even my parents grew up on farms where you had to wake up when the sun got up, rose, and you worked all throughout the day. You were never idle, and then you had, you know, you went to sleep. And that and was you for were, survival. Yes, and you repeated it again every day. And it was if you had a little time to yourself, maybe you were reading by candlelight. Maybe, <laughs> you know, if you had. I'm glad those we live means. Now. Yeah, so I think that it's like a generational thing of like 
our, our parents learned that. Well, my mine did. So then I feel like, oh, if I'm not doing something, then I'm not being productive enough. So that's my yeah. Theory. I, th- I mean, I do think I do think that, you know, it's sort of this human or even cultural, maybe just like um, especially different. I'm not saying like Western culture is more hustle. I mean, I think everyone is. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it comes down from generational trauma and generational ideas. But I'm really working hard on like I know th- I, we have really gotten off the topic of horror, <laughs> but not really but this because is horror. this is horror. This is real life horror. But I'm really working on that like – for some reason, I feel like I have to prove myself. But, like, if you think about yourself as a kid, like, think about little Kelly. Does yeah. she have anything to prove? No. No. Little Meg doesn't have anything to prove either. She's going to rewatch The Wizard of Oz yes. for the seventh time. Right. And so we don't have anything to prove either. Like, I mean, here we are at Horror on Main. All I have to prove is that I can afford stuff before <laughs> they cut up my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Meg. But then, you know, Chucky's going to magically get oh, cash out of your right. purse. I don't know. Ooh. If you're if you're still listening or watching, <laughs> then you will get that callback from earlier. So coming up, um, as we've already teased, next year, 2024, our our travel book is coming out. Something that we learned while we were traveling is that horror exists everywhere. <laughs> and there are horror fans everywhere. Yeah. All you have to do is find yeah. them. And the single biggest piece of advice, and we wrote about this, but I'm going <laughs> to give it to you now, is talk to your Uber drivers. Talk to locals. Because they will give you the insights, the gems, the places to go that you're not going to find on Google. Yeah. And you can do all the research ahead of time. Yeah. Well, you'll have our book. We're going to give you all those insights. Yeah. But Definitely. Anywhere you're traveling to, talk to people. You learn yeah. so much, and there just might be, a, you know, a haunted place around the corner that's not listed anywhere, but somebody knows about it. <laughs> and a lot of people have ghost stories. I'm oh always surprised yeah. how many people are like, okay, let me tell you about this ghost that I saw or heard. Um, I don't know why that surprises me, but it always does. And I'm like, really? Tell me. I and, hear. like, so many people, as I've been, when we meet them in person, then they even pull up photographic evidence. Yeah. I have... <laughs> So many scary pictures on my phone now because I've like <laughs> taken a picture of their picture to like remember to write about you, it. It's like disgusting. You it's so taken scary. taken a picture of the ghost that you saw. No. You were too scared. No. <laughs> I wouldn't have had it's the for, in my foresight brain. to do that. It's yeah. ingrained. Oh, no. I, you know, um, I don't, I don't want to like bury the lead, but I thought I saw a ghost yesterday when we were walking. Because Outside? yeah, I want to show you where I saw this oh, person. Lord. But if they were standing there, I think there was only a wall there for them to be standing against. So if they were standing there, it was either a ghost in khakis because they were in khaki pants, or it was either a ghost or somebody's literally standing like this against a wall. I don't like that. So I'm gonna show you where it was, and we're gonna see if they were standing against a wall. If there's like an open area, then maybe it's like somebody looking out. But I'm gonna show you, because I like was haunted by that all because I we were talking oh. and I looked, and then I ch- I looked again because I'm like, is that a man standing like literally with his face to the wall? Because that is scary. Icky. No, that's icky. Like um, regardless if it's a ghost or it's a real person. Like, either I don't want way, that. I don't like it. No. And either way, it seems really weird. They have khakis on. <laughs> Because I feel like a ghost should have – there's no modern ghost. It should have been, like, a guy in, like, pantaloons or something. I don't know. But khakis <laughs> existed in Gene Kelly's era, so he oh, might have been from the 50s. Okay. That's true. I only know that because that Gap ad, it's, it was, like, whoever wore khakis. It's, like, Marilyn Monroe wore khakis, and it was a picture. And then Gene Kelly wore oh, khakis. I don't remember that. I, I saved all of well, them because it was, Gene like, Kelly. old-timey. Yeah, like, yeah. I loved it. But, yeah. Oh, they had khakis back then. They did. Okay. So it would. So yeah, you saw maybe it was a 1950s, 1950s ghost. ghost. Okay, I'm gonna show you that place. I, now I that's another reason out. for you guys to come this weekend because hey, maybe there's ghosts. So yes, I am gonna post this um, either tonight, which is Friday, or Saturday. And so there's still time if you are in the Hunt yeah. Valley, Baltimore, Maryland area. Oh yes, and this we is what talk I wanted more to do. About I was here. Yes, I just pulled this up to make sure to let everyone know. Um, all of the wonderful people that are here, and you can get autographs, you can get pictures, you can get selfies, you can buy stuff. Um, this is not the right page I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's start with like there's some heavy hitters here, people. You know who okay. is here? Henry Thomas 
from all the Mike Flanagan shows, and he's from E.T., and he's from lots of good stuff, and he's so handsome. I saw him in person, Kelly. He's so handsome. I and I loved him. He was like my first crush. Annabeth Gish, who is also, oh my God. well, she's, she's from the X-Files, and if you know yeah. us, you know we're we big have X-Files, our X-Files. fans. Yeah. And she um, was also in Mike Flanagan. Yeah, she's in, I, yes. I saw them chatting stuff. together. Oh. They mm. work together. And then... Um, we've got Samantha Mathis. She was yes. in, um, well, she was in American Psycho. She was in that John Woo movie. Now I can't think of it, but she's great. She's the original Princess Peach. Let's oh, not well, there you go. Um, this guy. Uh, oh, Nick. she's playing Nick Ap- Apostolis. Apostolis. I'm sorry. I'm saying it wrong. <sighs> I'm not, and I'm not even going to try. Yeah. Because we just met him. He's the kindest man. Oh, my man. God. Lovely. And he's the voice of Leon Kennedy. In yes, Resident Evil lovely, 2 for and He even shared his Oreos with us and yes. some other um, people. So, yeah, um, that was great. Oh, and tell him about the Buffy guy. Oh, yeah. So Camden Toy, he plays the ghoul in Hush and, and also, like, other characters. He is the nicest man. Also, we met him, got his autograph. We haven't met a... a mean person everyone no, here everyone is, is lovely been and so great people always say like horror people are nice and it's true like honestly some of the nicest people we've ever met i can't find um the well, list of people but there's some other great authors here um jess McHugh, she does the blackout poetry that i'm like i started to become obsessed with that i ha- i just got a bought a big piece by holly walworth if um any of you are interested in blackout poetry and so i'm going to buy a piece from jess as well and i'm going to buy one of her books if not more than one of her books yikes i really you didn't I hear that Meg's <laughs> husband. <laughs> and um yeah and then there's oh my gosh there's people from jaws they're um oh the walking more, dead todd keesling's here tim lemon lots of um authors um yeah just uh lots of people i mean oh and comp- a composer that is oh, prolific yeah. he's like right across from us and he's playing his amazing music that he's had in like halloween and all this other stuff and i'm like how did we get so lucky kelly i don't know to be here and we're guests we're guests of honor they yes, call us yes we're so thankful so thank you everyone for yeah. listening and we hope to see you what we are going to do and this is like going to be a big rundown meg so get prepared <laughs> we are going to give this we're going to our scale we're going to rank these <gasps> recent movies oh. on a scale but what's our scale going to be that's going to encompass encompass everything yes. well something like uh, having to do with this convention yes probably? I think it's going to be this yes so um, everybody and by the way everybody keeps thinking I say whore on Maine yeah and well I know some woman was walking into the hotel today for I think a wedding and she's like what's going on here and I'm like it's a horror convention she's like a what <laughs> I'm like horror like scary movies <laughs> I didn't say it like yeah, that yeah yeah well Oops. I mean I feel like if it was a horror convention we would also be guessing all yeah <laughs> <laughs> in our own minds yeah Oh, okay. So the scale, What's our scale is. I mean, I feel like it's like got to be a bloody knife. It's a bloody knife because I mean, it kind of like goes with everything. Yeah, it fits with everything. Okay, okay. so on a scale of zero to ten, zero being you hated it, ten you think it's a perfect movie. What do you give Evil Dead Rise? Ten. What? I give it a ten too. What would I like? What could I possibly have needed? No, I know. I think other it than was... like Bruce Campbell, like well. Coming in on a steed or something. <laughs> I I was kind of thinking maybe he was going to be the dad. Oh, and I was like, be, oh, but cool. okay. So I don't know if oh, you knew. Right, yeah, he yeah, is a you voice. Did tell yeah, me. he's a voice you told on the me record. Before I saw yeah. it, so then when so I could I heard it. Yeah. yeah, and you heard it the second time. I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. and it's not the it's not the minister. It's the guy yeah. going, hey, what about that? Book? Yeah, <laughs> like so. There's yeah. my impression yeah. again. Okay, how about Scream Six? Zero to ten. Bloody knives. How many bloody knives do you give Ooh, Scream Six? I'm going to give it an eight. I thought it was really fun and a good time. I mean, it didn't reinvent the wheel, but you know what? We've got six screen movies, and they are all consistently good. I would say yeah. it's one of the best, um, like, horror series because it's good. I it's, agree. like, consistently good, and it never takes itself too seriously. And, and you always um, feel oh, for the people. because Margot they... Robbie in the beginning, that was cool. Oh, yes, love That was her. very cool. I love that whole sequence. Also, I just love how they really do a good job. These new screenwriters who have taken on this, this, the five and six, they do a good job of making us care and know about these people enough so that when people start dying, mm-hmm. you're like, oh no, not that guy or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, I also give it an eight. I yeah. think it's so much fun. Um, how many bloody knives do you give Megan? I'm going to give it a seven. I liked it. I thought it was good and fun. But um, I'm a horror girl, and it's like, it's just, it's like a little, it's a little horror adjacent, which is okay. But when we're coming with like, 
bloody knives, I have to give it a seven. Yeah. I'm going to give it a seven and a half okay. just because I had so much freaking fun. <laughs> Um, and how about Renfield? Oh, Renfield. I'm going to give it a nine. I thought it was so fun, funny, um, heartfelt, really earnest. And the best surprise was the gore, actually. Oh, because yeah. Because I wasn't – they didn't they didn't show a lot in, like, trailers and stuff, which I'm really um, happy about because um, it was, like, kind of a pleasant surprise Let's for me. Let's just say <laughs> – and, and if you haven't seen it, go watch it immediately. But, like, there's this – decapitation that takes place pretty close to the beginning that is shocking and it's just like oh it's this kind of movie I'm <laughs> yeah, in like, I'm yay, in yay, yay. Yeah, so that that yeah, that definitely like sets the tone for the rest of the movie and you're so excited. So yeah, um we we've just been spoiled with good horror I know. movies. And there's more there's oh more to come. God, and guess what? I'm sure there's a ton of things that we didn't mention no, because we just I know. we just talked about the ones that uh, off the top of our head obviously yeah, that we loved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um but Oh, wait. Okay, so Grave Encounters. What yes. would you give that? Because I, I haven't seen it ten, yet. I give them tens. <gasps> I realize that that's like, you're like, oh, grr. And yeah, they're not like, you know, high budget but, movies, but they matter. freaking you scared you me. You have nothing to prove, girl. You have no one to convince. So then after we watch those, Campbell's like, well, what the heck is going to compare to this now that's going to scare me? <laughs> Hell House LLC, baby. Oh, I'm glad you showed it. Did, oh. he, did that scare him? Yeah. Okay, good. And, I and love I made Mark Hell watch House. it, too. And I've only seen that one once, oh my too. God, I need so to scary. watch it again. It's so scary. I tried. I couldn't get into the sequels. No, Nate, shout out to our friend Nate, he told us, do not watch the sequels. I tried, and I'm like, no. But um, That's why I was, I scared. That one I was scared about Grave Encounters, too, because sometimes, yeah. you know, sequels yeah. aren't as good. Yeah. But we looked it up, and the ratings were just okay. as high. Okay, well, I and gotta so, get on that. And real quick, Bed Rest with yeah. the main actress of Scream. Scream. And she was in something else I just saw, too. Um, Is she just in Bed Rest the whole movie? Well, <laughs> it's the perfect premise. It's, cause what, it's the story of my oh, life. It's so good. Okay. What a great premise, though. Like, yeah. You're, is she pregnant? Is yeah. that the, oh. And something's happening, oh, and shit. you shouldn't get out of bed. Oh, shit. Shit, what are you gonna shit. do? No, it's so it was it's really good. I okay, good. I really enjoyed it. I also Campbell like came in and watched the end of it with me because I'm just like oh my god. <laughs> so I think I was just in a jumpy mood that week or something. But guess I what? Guess so. I I love it. That's yeah. why I love horror. I love to feel things. Yeah. Oh, speaking of feeling things, <laughs> I don't know what that segue was. <laughs> We're going to have some events this summer and in the fall that you need to come and see us in person. Don't feel us, but you could shake our hands. Cool. But Well, it depends. <laughs> um, we're going to be at FinFest, okay? <laughs> Listen, she's laughing, but no, Kelly is, is the foremost. You went, <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> no, I did not. Kelly is the foremost Finnish American horror author. Yeah, that is not that's a true. small thing. That's true. And I will be there with not a drip of Finnish in me. Well, <laughs> except for we every be... once in a while because my husband's Finnish. Oh, gross. Okay, uh, we'll do, <laughs> no, I'll make you a blood sister before then. <laughs> okay. A sister. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're getting silly so, now, So Okay, friends. no, but we're going to be at FinFest. And then in the fall, in September... We're going to be in South oh, Dakota. I'm at very excited about that. This, this book is festival. a book. The thing is, though, this is not a horror thing. It's a book thing. We're going to have to like, we're representing. We're going to have to basically. fight for our lives. Out we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> it is in Deadwood. One of the parts. Of, we're, is it? It's in Rapid City and Deadwood. Are you kidding yeah. me? So we're I literally. Should re- I should have read the paperwork lives. before yeah. I signed the contract. <laughs> <laughs> I love Deadwood. I know. No, we're going to Deadwood. Okay. So that's news to Kelly as well. See, <laughs> we have it together. Meg is yeah. a writer and I'm a reader and we can <laughs> put together sentences and pronounce people's yeah. names correctly yes. in movies. So join us at FinFest. <laughs> <laughs> and until next time, we'll see you in the horror section. Bye.